Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Nick. I'm Beck. And we are Envy Board Gaming. We're continuing our tournament of 30 card games. We decided to do this if you haven't joined us before. Um, we're doing this because we don't really review card games as readily as we do actually big board games, big Ameritrash or Euro games. Um, so we're going to give you know our own segment just to card games that I own. We decided on 30 to start out and we are continuing our matchup. We're still in the first round. We are almost done with the first round. The two matchups we're going to do on this uh, episode, as you see in the title, is Hanami Koji versus Star Trek Chronotech. Um, had both these games for a little while, but Chronotech actually isn't that old. It came out basically when we got it. It was on the Dice Tower Cruise. It came out in 2019, actually. And uh, yeah, that's, a little, that's not as popular, not as known, but it's by Looney Labs. Um, Andrew Looney designed it. And we have this one here, Anami Koji, which is actually pretty popular. So these are going to match up in our first one. And then after that, we're going to have Dead Celebs, which is kind of like an unknown game because it's not even on Board Game Geek. Like, it, might, it might be now, but when I looked a yeah. few months ago, it wasn't on there. And it's you know, not half bad either versus, versus uh, Fable of Fruit, which is more of a modern board game that people would know about. But this, the Dead Celebs, you can get like a... What did we get? We got like a novelty type store. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go over to our first matchup: Hanami Koji and Star Trek Chronotech. Chronotech. Um, we are gonna go ahead and score the Tra one. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna decide who won. We're gonna write down our winner on these whiteboards. Show them at the same time. If there is a draw meaning that she wrote one and i wrote another then it will be up to the scores whatever loser has the higher score is going to advance so you ready vic we're yeah. going to vote on who wins between hanami koji and star trek chronotech all right trek uh, what, yeah. <laughs> all right here we go okay hanami koji okay good yeah. hanami koji does defeat star trek chronotech so not an upset here um you want to talk about this game or me yeah uh, i could start all right go ahead so this game, very uh, uh, space-themed, um, sci-fi heavy. Uh, obviously, if you watch Star Trek, if you're familiar with the franchise, you'll probably enjoy the game right away because of the characters in it. It does have uh, many different characters from the show in it, different uh, events that happen in the show. I'm not a, a Trekkie, so I don't know everything about it, but I know some of the some of the general concepts of Star Trek. So it was, it was fun. It was easy to pick up once I understood what we were going for. I didn't think the rules were too crazy. I, did, I know you read the rules. He's the rule reader. Uh, but it seemed once, once I understood what was going on, I felt okay. And I could proceed with confidence, like playing it. And uh, it, it's a thinky for the little guy that it is. You do have to make some thought. But, but I found it a little easy at the end when we were playing. And maybe it was just lucky, but um, the... You know, it was it was quick. It's not too long of a game, and yeah, those are kind of my positives. All right, I'll go positives and negatives. Mm -hmm. um, positives, I like that there's a bunch of different ways to play as far as the characters. You're gonna get a ton of different characters yeah. out there. There's a big stack of characters, and they all have different win conditions, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, the game does play pretty well at times, and then it leads to my negatives that it doesn't play really well at times. <laughs> Uh, the fact that you cannot really respond when somebody has their win condition, there's no response to that. And that can happen pretty quick. It could be just uh, an action of flipping cards with a, with a linchpin, flipping a linchpin or whatever, and then it has a ripple effect and it changes the cards that you needed. So you can really plan that out easily at the beginning of your turn. It's not something difficult. You see what you need. It's like, okay, I got to flip these, done. These are flipped. Now I need an artifact. And sometimes you get artifacts very easily. Mm -hmm. And if so and your opponent can't cancel it, that's game over, and that's all, that's all there is to it. Yeah. Um, so go ahead, Vic. What's your score on the loser? We so scored the losers. My so. score for this one is a seven point two. Actually, kind of enjoy it. Uh, think it's fun for what it is. Uh, I see it's very portable. I mean, it does require a lot of space to lay out all the cards of the timeline, but you know, it's kind of interesting that you're adjusting time and the events that have happened. I, I don't know. I thought that it was kind of cool. Okay. Well, as the game sits right now with no house rules, nothing, I'm going to give it a five um, just because of the way you can win so easily. And the, it, it, it bothers me to not house rule that. It just ends so abruptly. It can end in two turns, technically. If you get a linchpin that gives you both the things you needed or if something was already set for you, 
because that happens. Mm -hmm. People are already set, some things are already set on the board. That's what I needed. Yeah. It's already that way. I can flip one thing, and next next turn I play an artifact, and it's over. Mm -hmm. So as the, as the as the rules are written, it's not. Um, it it kind of sucks in some fashion, but it can be a good game. Um, so I'm not. You know, gonna give it like a two or a three. It can be good. You can house rule that, um, and it, some games might be way better than others. I can definitely see that. Some games are pretty terrible, and some games are enjoyable. So if you are a Trekkie and you know don't want to take it too serious, you know if you don't, if you win right away, you can play it again. Maybe next game will be better. Unfortunately, with that kind of consistency, I'm gonna I'm gonna dock it. I'm gonna get a five, and uh, I think that's actually pretty fair. All right, next one up. We got that done. That game's gone. Hanami Koji is advancing. So this time, let's talk a little bit about these games. We have, which one do you want to talk about, Vic? Let's grab my eraser. Um, I'll talk about one, you talk about another, as far as sure. how they play. Yeah. So for uh, this one, I will do Dead Celebrity, since Nick is a little more familiar with Fabled Fruit. Okay. I only recently understood right. what was going on in that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dead Celebrity. So this game, uh, we got it from a novelty shop of some sort, at the mall, I think, or I don't know. Some one of those so, uh, shops like that, and this is all dead celebrities. It's, it's a trivia game, but it's also um, players have three categories that they're choosing. There's like 300 cards in this game, and you base you, you have to guess who the person is that you're talking about, and it can start with like very broad things about them in the trivia section where you're giving these out. You can show them a picture, but it's not like a clear picture of the person. So it's sort of a abstract photo. I don't know, it's not abstract, but their face is obscured. I can give it out, go ahead. Yeah, go their face is obscured. And then the last one is uh, in the category is about yeah. uh, just a hint, right, of the musician? Yeah, you keep getting better, like better hints. Think yeah, about it. trivia. I think Smartass is one. Is that the game that it's similar to, where you can get you get more points if you guess for like, like you guess with the, like the more broad clue. What is that? The guess who? Guess who? Yeah. So that would be James Gandolfini. You kind of like, oh, that sort of looks like him. And then they have. Uh, so you get like trivia a, one the broad Nick clue, yeah, the broad clues. If you guess it before, you need all these other clues that are going to give you. So eventually, by the end, it's pretty obvious, or it should be. Or maybe you just don't know that person. Then, if you don't know it by that point, yeah. And then they have one that is a straight up, uh, "Who am I?" And they, you just give them a hint of actor. I don't know what this is. Oh, uh, what was this one? Let's look. Let's look. Now I'm curious because that was a little weird. Yeah. So that, uh, who am I? Maybe you acted out. Ah, who am I? Yeah, yeah, this there, one, so the yellow one, you do a little bit of charades. Yeah. Sorry, couldn't remember. It's been a while since we played this really uh, light game. It's not too, too in-depth. Loosen limbs, time to be creative. One member, of the team, one member must act that out. Yeah, yeah, so you have to act out David Bowie or yeah, Paul Walker. Yeah, you got Walker. a dice right here, so you're going to do the category based on a die roll. Yeah. Uh, we have a sand timer in there as well. And there, there, Very straightforward there. game. Yep. Not much to it. What's Fabled Fruit about? Well, Fabled Fruit is a legacy type card game. It's a. All right, we're going to start with six places. And technically, you have a worker placement element in this. It's still a card game because you just have, you just have your little meeple and you're doing things on cards. It's a set collection game, so you have fruits. Yeah, you want me to hold it up? Yeah, and pass the eraser. So. Yeah, you need to update, don't you? Mm -hmm. There you go. The winner goes on that one, and the loser score on that one. Yeah. Fabled Fruit, um, that's what it looks like. We have the expansion too, which we haven't even touched because this game has a lot in it. We can go through it uh, for a long time. There are stacks and stacks of cards and it, not all cards are played because you can see this one's still in shrink because they're in sequence. So they're numbered on all the cards. So we have the active card when we take, when we were to pick up this game again, this will be the active selection um, of the spaces we can go to. So they're actually worker placement spots that you do an action on. And there's gonna be between five, seven different ones out there at any given time. Because as you complete these, there's four of these, there's a stack. As you complete it, you take those cards. How do you complete it? You, can, you do it by spending fruits. That's a part of the set collection. So there's another stack of cards, which are actually fruits in here. And you're trying to collect sets based on the prerequisites on the cards themselves. So like these monkeys want, or these meerkats want two bananas, two strawberries and a fruit of our choice. You have to go to that spot. Hopefully it's not occupied by another player. If it is, you owe them a fruit um, from your hand as well. If it's not, you just go there and spend what's needed on that card and you take that card. And that's, that becomes part of the win condition. Uh, if it's four players, you need three fruits. That's how we always play it, it's four players. 
Um, so you'll need three fruits. First pe person that does that wins that round, that game. Um, that is basically how you play. But again, the game, every game of this is going to change as you go because the cards are going to change, which means the worker placement um, points change. Mm -hmm. So it's not technically a straight up card game since there are worker placement elements, but it's everything out here is a card except you get one meeple. Everything else is a card. Mm -hmm. So we, we included it. All right. So we are going to pick between the winner of Dead Celebs and Fabled Fruit. Let's go, Vic. You already know what my pick is. So is this about which one's yours? Okay, answers. Fabled Fruit. Fabled Fruit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Vic has come around this game. She didn't like it as much. Um, at least she likes it more than Dead Celebs. Uh, for me, that was just an easy pick. I mm -hmm. didn't know if there would be an upset just because Vic didn't really care for Fable Fruit as much as I do, for sure. I actually really like Fable Fruit. There was no question in my mind when it was matched up with this, so um, not competitive. Um, so let's go with what do we like about this? Or actually, let's go with your score. What's your yeah, score on this so one? Yeah, so my score for Dead Celebs is going to be a 5.9. Um, it's just, it's very basic. It's not crazy fun i mean it's okay but it gets it overstays its welcome really quickly to me i mean it's just sort of okay a game about dead celebrities i mean it it's all right i'll play it if i had to but it's not the game i would reach for okay yeah um my biggest pro are the red cards i like the jet the smart ass yes. type thing where you're yeah. trying to guess it's like a more of a trivia style i like that i i, I do um it helps the game out a lot the acting is stupid. I don't like it. The face is stupid. I don't like it. But just for that one yeah. field, which I was like, you know what? Let's just play the red stack and just keep going back we and did, forth. And yeah. it's enjoyable. Like, that's fine. That's true. If that was just the game, then it would be like a 6-3. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and you can do that. I mean, you can just say, you know, screw the dice. We don't want it. Um, I think when we do it, we did two, we like two of them. Maybe the acting we didn't like. I mm -hmm. think we always skip the act. Like, yeah, because we didn't know like, how do you act out David Bowie? Yeah, I mean, uh, you draw a star on your. If you guys eyes. are both fans, you might be able to pull that out, you know. Um, but it is pretty. Paul Walker is pretty grim too. Like <laughs> you have to act out dead celebs, so you might act out how they died. That is a viable strategy. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, my score is going to be a six, oh, so I like it oh, more yeah. than. Uh, one. Th yeah, we're one, we're one tenth nice. different. Okay. Um, I give it a six because I don't mind playing it. It doesn't bother me to play it. Whereas Star Trek, it it wouldn't bother me to play it, uh, but you've got to be aware of this game. It, it fails a lot. This one isn't going to really fail you. You'll just maybe have to tweak it to what you like best. Yeah. Um, you'll have to maybe get rid of a category like we did. Mm -hmm. So every time we rolled yellow, we would re-roll. Because like, we ain't doing yellow. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, so it was a six for me, but it is gone. Fable Fruit and Hanabi Koji um, move on to the bracket. So go ahead and post it up there. And that is our bracket right there that I'm showing. We'll see. I don't even know what they're going to match up against next. I can't see the bracket. It's actually a file on my computer. Um, but I'm excited to see where, for me, where Fable Fruit goes because I love Fable Fruit. It made my top 100 games of all time. So yeah. I I'll see where that ends up. And. Vic probably kick it out as soon as possible, maybe. Anyway, wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this showdown of cards. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel for more great videos. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.